Thank you very much, Chairman. So, failure of maturation of AV access. Um, what's the definition? No one's really come up with a good definition of a mature fistula, but this one is short and sweet, a fistula that can be repetitively cannulated and provide adequate flow for dialysis. If I said to you the next slide will guarantee you that you will get a mature fistula, that would be the end of my talk. However, this is what you have to have. You have to be white, Caucasian male, quite young, artery size greater than two millimeter, vein size 2.5 millimeters or greater. You need to have an experienced surgeon, no chronic diseases and no repetitive venipuncture in the vein that you're going to use. The patient shouldn't have any accessory veins that will steal the blood from your fistula. No new intimal hyperplasia, no previous lines, and you need to be negative for panel reactive antibodies. Unfortunately, surgeons don't live in a perfect world, so non-maturation, why is it happening? Let's look at blood flow. That previous speaker mentioned that you need to have a blood flow of at least, for, uh, I think he mentioned 40 mils per minute. The fissure requirement is 10 times to 20 times that. And if we look at Poiseuille's law, an 80% increase in the diameter of the artery will result in a tenfold increase in blood flow. And we often see that the, the, the artery does um, increase in size. But uh, it doesn't really f uh, follow this law because viscosity and uh, non-laminar flow in fistulas upsets that, that law. So in effect, you can actually get a much higher blood flow. Surgical experience. Now, I'm not advocating that you shouldn't let your trainees do the fistulas, but the important thing is you have to be there scrubbed up, supervised with your trainee so that it's done correctly. And obviously, if you're a high volume center, you'll do better than a low volume center. New intimal hyperplasia. I'll talk about the swing segment of fistulas, but this is due to abnormal hemodynamics. And if you have careful attention to detail, you can avoid the majority of these problems that occur in patients. And typically, this doesn't happen at the anastomotic site. It happens at this kind of bend where the fistula is going up, upstream into the arm. And accessory veins, sometimes they're not apparent preoperatively unless you've done a very detailed duplex scan. Uh, often they come into light once the fistula has been created and the best thing to do is to identify these and tie off the ones that are causing the steel away from the main body of the vein and that will improve your blood flow and hopefully maturation. Preoperative mapping. I mean, in our unit we always get an ultrasound, a uh, preoperative ultrasound because it shows what the arterial flow diameter is going to be like the venous compliance and the diameter of the vein, and if you've got any upstream stenosis. And importantly, you have to combine this with physical examination of the patient. One of the problems that you find is if the cephalic vein is very far from the uh, brachial artery, you, I mean, the ultrasonographer is not going to necessarily tell you that. You have to identify that by uh, examining the patient. Previous lines for dialysis, if you've had a line, you're going to have a 50% chance that you've got an upstream stenosis, and that will affect your maturation of your fistula. But not only that, if you uh, have a fistula, then a proportion of these patients will get congestion, arm swelling, and what you need to do is reduce the incidence of these crash landers. These are acute renal failure patients that come in get a line, and then get a subsequent fistula. So you need to monitor the chronic patients well so that they get a fistula in good time prior to dialysis. And panel reactive antibodies, these are normally used in uh, transplant recipients, but a recent study did show that a high score in uh, PR uh, antibodies uh, will lead to uh, low maturation rates, especially in women. So how are we going to avoid problems and salvage this uh, fissure that hasn't matured? 
Well, these factors we can't fix. Um, and these are pretty much um, with you. You're not going to be able to adjust these factors. But what about the modifiable risk factors? Identify these patients early uh, and try to get an access, uh, vascular access, uh, at least about three to six months prior to potential dialysis and avoid uh, CVC lines. Creating the fistula, a good surgical technique, and the swing segment. And what I do is, once the fistula has been formed, I create a tunnel to avoid this kind of sharp angle from the fistula and divide any adventitial bands because that will cause uh, flow disturbance and eddy currents within the fistula and uh, hyperplasia. And uh, there's uh, some good promising results in the serolimus wrap. And these results are going to be, I think it's a French meeting later on this year, they're going to uh, talk about these results. And post-AV creation, what we do is uh, duplex every fistula at two weeks, and you will identify problems. So you might need to ligate some veins, any stenosis, and uh, clopidogrel is, doesn't uh, improve mat maturation. There was a good study done in 2008, but it does improve patency of your fistula. And identifying the problems, clinical examination, duplex, and a fistula gram. And remember, a third of non-maturing fistulas do not demonstrate any angiographic lesion. So you're just left with a fistula that you don't know why it's not maturing. And you might need a period of time to for maturation, you might need to cannulate some fistulas and identify the problem and treat as such. So in conclusion, fistula maturation can be improved by careful preoperative planning and attention to detail. Early imaging at two weeks will identify the majority of problem fistulas, and unfortunately you have to accept that not all fistulas will mature. Thank you.